fucked a fat girl one time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not talking like, you know, she was sort of like chubby or a bit of a porker. No, 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 I'm talking about like a fucking whale. I mean, like an orca. I mean, like she was minimum one and a half times me, okay? I mean, I'm a fairly big guy, right? She was bigger than me. And fucking her, man, it was like, uh, it was like, 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 like swimming in an ocean of flesh. It was Jesus. You know, it was at once horrifying and hypnotic. It was like the weirdest fucking experience. Yeah, it was funny as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I did that back in, what was it, 2001, was it? 2001, I think. Yeah, I must have been like 33, 32 years old, something like that. Yeah, I was uh, traveling through Alaska, and I met this girl. I'm not going to go into the details because she, maybe she's still around. Maybe she'll sue me, right? But anyway, uh, I met this girl and wound up banging her. And I banged her strictly to get her, you know, to, to check her off my bucket list. Yeah, because at that time, you know, the shit that you do when you're, when you're young. Yeah, at that time, I had like this list of girls that I wanted to bang at some point in my life, right? Uh, you know, I'd banged models, I'd banged actresses, uh, you know, and, and I was thinking, you know, I, I want to bang like a whole bunch of different girls, you know, and, and like, I remember at that time, I had yet to bang a black girl. Uh, I'd banged Asian girls. And I, you know, I, you know, when I fucked this fat girl, she, she was, you know, just tick off my list. I banged a fat girl, and not just a fat girl. And I'm telling you, she was enormous. <laughs> but see, banging some fat chick to get her off your bucket list, or your your list of sexual escapades that you want to uh, carry out before you're off this mortal coil. I mean. That's all good and fine, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, right? It's pretty fucking funny. But when I say don't settle for a fat girl, I'm talking about a relationship, okay? It's all good and fine to sport fuck a whale, but uh, being in any kind of relationship with such a woman? Are you out of your fucking mind? No! Now, of course, you know, fat girls are going to say, you know, what's wrong with you? Don't you like a, a, a woman with a little bit of meat on her bones? Yeah, I do, but I don't want like the, the whole fucking meat section on the single set of bones, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Jesus Christ, these women, right, they are enormous. And the fact of the matter is, see, there is something inherently wrong with them. Uh, as simple as that. It's not that they're, they're, they're just some like ordinary girl and they're just fat. No, 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 they're, they're fucked up. They're damaged. They're, they're women you want nothing to do with for crying out loud. I mean, come on. A woman who's weighing, I don't know, 250, 300 pounds or more, right, as, as there are out there, right? Uh, what the fuck you think is wrong with her, right? She's got head issues, head issues that you cannot solve. Because are you a, a, a shrink with a lot of experience? Yes, no, maybe, huh? No, she's got head issues. You want nothing to do with her. Apart from the fact that she's grotesque, because she is. I don't give a shit about this stuff of like, oh, she's got a great personality, and oh, she's a lovely person, and you know, she helps the elderly, and she, you know, you know, knits macrame or some shit like that. You know, come on, they're repulsive. It's as simple as that. And and these women who are, you know, a, a thousand pounds or whatever the fuck, right? Jesus, you know, they. I I look at them, and you know, I lose the urge to eat the second I see one. The fat, that's the, 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 the long and short of it, or, or the fat and skinny of it, right? Because, yeah, these women, they do not take care of themselves, right? And the only reason that they are that fat, it's not because of their thyroid condition. It's not because, you know, the culture made them like, like that, or that there's like this thin privilege or some shit like that. No, the reason these women are so fucking fat is because they don't stop eating for crying out loud. They have no self-control. Hmm. One of the deadly sins of the, you know, Catholic teachings is gluttony. Yeah, and it is a sin. They have no self-control, these women, and so they eat and eat and eat and eat, and, and, you know, they are fucked up. They are damaged, and that's why you shouldn't even think about such a girl. But then, why am I doing this video? I mean, if it's, I find it completely unnatural and wrong for a guy to be dating some whale, right? and I'm advising you who are watching to not do it under any set of circumstances, well, then obviously it must be the case that a lot of guys do date such girls. And that's the thing, they do. 
there are a lot of guys, decent guys, worthwhile guys, nice guys, hardworking guys, smart guys, who settle for a fat girl. What the fuck? I told you guys in my video, don't settle. You can find it right here. Yeah, never settle. That should be tattooed on the inside of your skull, right? And that goes for settling for a fat girl. Yeah, it doesn't matter how nice she is. It doesn't matter how, you know, wonderful she is in all kinds of metrics. She's fat. And therefore, that is a signifier of something very bad, but more to the point insofar as settling is concerned. See, a man, you, well, the, the fact of the matter is what I've noticed is that, see, you get what you settle for. If you decide that your standards are high, the things that you are going to get, well, they, they, they are of quality. But if you decide to settle, that is, if you lower your standards, well, then you're going to get the dregs now, aren't you? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. You are going to get the dregs, and the dregs of the sexual marketplace are fatties, orcas. That's the bottom of the barrel, buddy. Yeah. Do you want that? Hmm? Do you want to settle for the bottom of the barrel? See, I'm no great shakes. I'm not like this <laughs> super sexy guy. I got my paunch. Right? I got my double chin here, you know, I, I got a lazy left eye, I'm not too socially adroit. Yeah, but the women I have banged, the women I married, uh, uh, the women who have been my girlfriends, they've all been universally hot. Yeah, every single one. Because I don't settle. I prefer to be alone than with some reject. Because those are my standards. And because those are my standards, what do I attract? What kind of woman gravitates towards me? The hot girl, the, the, the top of the barrel. Mm. That's what gravitates towards me because I don't settle. See, in life, of course, you have to make compromises. Of course, you know, it's, sometimes it's impossible to get the best, right? But in the important things in life, for instance, the woman you're with, the woman that you form a relationship with and, and have children with and what have you, you can't be settling, okay? Because there are some things that you can compromise on and it's okay. Like, uh, for instance, you know, where are we gonna go to lunch? Are we gonna go to the Thai, Thai place or are we gonna go to the uh, Italian place? And you don't want to go to the Thai place, you really wanna go to the Italian place, but in the end you go to the Thai place, big fucking deal, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter because that's trivial, inconsequential. It's just fucking lunch, right? But when it comes to the woman that you are going to spend the rest of your life with, the woman who will potentially be the mother of your children, the woman who will potentially be your future ex-wife, right? I mean, come on. Uh, what do you want? Do you want bottom of the barrel or top tier? I mean, I made my choice. I chose to only go with top tier women. And that's what I get, top tier women. It's a conscious choice that you make. Does that mean that sometimes, you know, I, I'm not with a woman, that I've been alone? Fuck yeah, sure. When you have standards, when you have high standards, it's inevitable that sometimes, you know, you, reality does not meet those expectations. Yeah, and, and point of fact, most of the time, reality is not going to meet your expectations. But see, it, it, it's sort of like, uh, um, how can I put it? I'm, I'm trying to think of a metaphor of, of like slipping, of like getting back into addiction or something like that. That's what I'm sort of like circling around in my head because the, the point I'm trying to make is that, see, it only takes one. It only takes the one time. It only takes the one time whether you settle or whether you maintain your standards. Whether you decide to, you know, okay, fine, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, a try of having a relationship with this porker. Or you say to yourself, no, you know, this girl, she's just fat and slovenly and, you know, I don't want to settle. It only takes the one time, okay? Just like drug addicts, okay? You see drug addicts, they have temptation all around them. And, and what happens? They slip up the one time and they're back, you know, shooting up heroin in a fucking, you know, back alleyway, right? Yeah, well, you have to think of yourself as a drug addict, okay? You're going to be a drug addict, a recovering drug addict. And what is your drug? Settling. And what are you going to do? Not settle. That's how you have to focus the situation. Yes, because when you settle, you become less. Oh, yeah.
You see those guys, like you might have known them in high school or something, and they were great guys, and they had all, 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 everything going for them, right? They were smart, they were popular, this, that, the other, and you know, their lives didn't end too much. I mean, they didn't amount to much, right? And why do you think that was? Because they settled. They settled a little bit at a time. They, they, they settled, you know, on, on the issue of, you know, not going to the best college, just going to the community college. You know, not dating or marrying the hottest girl, but just, you know, uh, you know not trying to get the best job, but just the, uh, you know, the good enough job. See, our lives are a series of compromises or a series of decisions where you decide not to compromise. And that determines the outcome of your life. Yeah. I mean, you decide that you're going to go to a shitty-ass school and get a shitty-ass life, well, then, you know, th th that's going to be your destiny. But if you decide not to, if you decide to go for the highest, for the best, for quality, well, then, you know, maybe you don't get to the top-tier school, but you get to a really goddamn good school. You see what I'm saying? I mean, in my own case, I remember when I applied to college, right? I applied to college and I decided I'm going to go to the Ivy Leagues. I'm going to apply only to Ivy League and top tier school. Fuck the safety school, fuck everything else. I'm just going to go to the top school, right? And I had my heart set on Harvard, right? I didn't get accepted to Harvard. Yeah, I got the, the thin letter from Harvard, the thin envelope from Harvard, right? But I got everywhere else. I got into Dartmouth, I got into Stanford, Johns Hopkins, Duke, every place. Yeah, Yale. You know, didn't want to go to Yale because they're all fucking gay, but that's another issue, right? See, I got in everywhere I applied to, except for fucking Harvard. Big fucking deal. I had my choice, but you, you see what I mean? I didn't compromise. And when I was applying, see, I was like, what? Why well, was it 22, 21, 22, 22? And uh, I was doing it in Chile. And this uh, woman who advised expats in Chile to apply to college, she was telling me that I should apply to Connecticut College or Manhattanville College? And I was like, what the fuck is that? I've never even heard of them at the time, right? And, you know, all due respect to alumni of Connecticut College and Manhattanville College or whatever the fuck, but, you know, I, I, I didn't want to go there. I wanted the best, and I didn't compromise. And same with women. Same with women. A uh, fat girl. You know, I, I, okay, this video, I'm, I'm getting away from what I'm trying to say, but to focus it back on fat girls. See, you, you got to keep something in mind insofar as men and women are concerned. Women control sexual opportunity, okay? Uh, a guy always wants to fuck, but whether he fucks or not is going to depend on the woman, not the man, right? The guy is always on, and the woman says yay or nay. But insofar as relationships are concerned, men hold all the cards. Because women want relationships. It's their de facto mode. Yeah. And it's because of fucking biology, right? I mean, and, and any fucking feminist SJW loser who's watching this shit right now, who, who says like, no, it's not like that. Don't fuck off, you idiot. It is. Women want a relationship because it's their natural instinct because of their drive for procreation. And they want to have a relationship with a man. It's the man who decides whether he's going to have a relationship with a woman or not. You're the guy. You decide. You decide whether you're going to have a relationship with a fat girl or not. You decide, you know, how you are going to proceed with your life. You are the guy in charge. Yeah, and you know what they say about uh, the people in charge, the bosses, right? It's not that they work. It's that they decide, okay? That's the nature of being the boss. You have to make decisions, and you have to make the right fucking decisions, okay? And you have to understand where you can compromise and where you can not compromise. You should never compromise with fat girls because she'll just pull you down. She'll just pull you down and you'll be just a pathetic fuck who married some porker. And everybody will laugh at you. And, and you say to me, like, oh, I don't care about what other people think. Bullshit. We all care about what other people think of us. Yeah? Do you think that uh, I, I don't get a little bit of a thrill, of a little bit of a kick, when people see my wife or girlfriend and they're like, wow, she's hot? Fuck yeah. Of course I get it. I, I, of course I get that little thrill. And do they treat me different? Fuck yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they most certainly do. Okay? Because that's the way of nature. Because we're fucking animals. Never forget that, okay? Now, a final note. Oh, man, this video has been all over the fucking place. But, okay, a final note. And this is an important note. I understand why guys settle for fat girls. I understand. 
I mean, the fat girls, when, when a guy decides not to settle for them, right, they start, they freak the fuck out, right? They freak the fuck out and, like, say, oh, you got a little dick or, or you know, this, that, the other. They, they question your masculinity, all kinds of crap that's just, this is bullshit, okay? But from the point of view of a guy, a guy who settles for a fat girl, see, it's because he's lonely and he is deeply insecure. He's lonely and so he wants somebody in his life, you know? It's not just for the fucking, it's for the companionship, right? So it's perfectly natural. So you're alone, you don't want to feel this empty ache in your heart, and so you want somebody to sort of like help you along, right? Help you along, help you to alleviate this loneliness. And here's the fat girl. The fat girl, you know, your buddy or whatever, you know, you met her, however, in school, whatever the fuck, right? And, and yeah, she alleviates that feeling of loneliness, okay? So, on the one hand, there's this desire to alleviate this feeling of loneliness. And on the other, there's this fear that in the future, which stretches out ahead of you, it looks like such a lonely road. And you think to yourself, well, you know, in the future, I'm, I'm never going to get a hot girl. I'm never going to get a girl as hot as this one. Hmm? Or even as good as this one. Even if she's a fat porker, you're saying to yourself, you know, I, I'm never, ever, ever going to, no, you know, she's it for me because in the future, uh, I'm, I'm not going to have anything better. And you give up. Do not fucking do that. Because I am here to tell you from experience. I am 51 fucking years old. And so, you know, I, I've made a lot of fucking mistakes in my life, but one of the great things about being 51 years old is that I have seen shitloads. And I'm here to tell you that no matter how shitty the moment you are living in is right now, it's gonna get better. It will for sure get better. And if you think that the woman that you're thinking about settling with is the best you're gonna ever be able to do in your long life, I'm here to tell you, man, this is not true. This is not true. There will be more and better opportunities in the future. Shitloads better opportunities in the future. Oh, yeah. I've told this story before, I think. Uh, and if I've told it before, well, you know, I'm an old man who repeats himself. So, back in like uh, 2009, I think, 2010, something like that, I was dating this girl, she was 19 years old. She was smoking fucking hot. I mean, she was so fucking hot. I mean, she was just, just, oh man, just blew my fucking mind, right? She was this 19 year old thing, five foot six, tight body, perfect tits, perfect ass. I mean, just perfect, right? And I remember one time, you know, we, we'd finished fucking, we're at my place, and we're like watching TV after sex and something comes on and she starts laughing her head off. Uh, something I said or something that TV happened, a joke, what have you. And, and we're laughing our asses off. She's laughing her ass off, right? And I, I'm thinking to myself at that moment, I thought to myself, this is the best girl I'm ever going to have in my life. I, I'm never going to get a girl hotter than this one. Two years later, I'd already broken up with her and I wound up marrying a girl who was hotter than her. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. See, life changes. Life brings more opportunities. So, so no matter what you think now, in the future, there'll be more opportunities and better opportunities. And insofar as your loneliness, well, you got to make friends with loneliness. Yeah, you, you cannot allow loneliness to dictate your actions. You cannot allow any emotion to dictate your actions. And loneliness is an emotion. It's a feeling. And you cannot take paths or do things that will have an impact for the rest of your life based on you know, a momentary passing feeling of loneliness. You, you can't marry a fat girl just because you happen to be lonely at that given moment and you figure, well, you know, this is the best I can do, so settle. No, you can't do that. Don't. Oh yeah, and a final note. Uh, final note, uh, I guess it's a personal note. A lot of guys, a lot of girls, a lot of people are gonna watch this video and say, you know, coach, you're a fucking asshole. You're a fucking dickhead. You're, you're a fucking bastard. So? 
And by the way, you know, when, whenever you're uh, around a fat girl, you know, tell her. Yeah, just tell her outright. Say to her face, with, without any compunction, without any kind of like a, a, a recourse to fake politeness. Tell her that you don't want to date her because she is fat. Tell her to her face. Yeah, because see, one of the problems that we're having is that so many of these girls are fat because there isn't any kind of pressure on them to lose weight. Yeah, and, and the pressure, where does it come from? It comes from men. It comes from us. We have to be the ones who tell them, hey, chick, whatever your name is, you're fucking fat. Lose the fucking weight. Oh, yeah. And see, I have told my girlfriends when they're gaining weight. And they don't like it. And I don't care because I don't want to be around a fat girl. No, I want around to be around a thin, fit, healthy woman. And if she starts gaining weight and plumping out, I just tell her, yeah. And usually once is enough. If I have to tell her twice, you know, well, I've never actually had to tell them twice. Because yeah, because girls need that. They need a guy to tell them. Mm -hmm. Just as they need a guy to tell them that they look wonderful in their dress and that their makeup is fine, because they need this, they also need a man to tell them when they're fat. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a psychological need. Yeah, so don't be afraid of telling a girl that she's fat. Mm -mm. No, be self-confident about it, yeah? I mean, a girl is fat, you just go ahead and tell her, look, honey, you know, sweetheart, you're fat. You're getting fat. Or, or you know, if you keep on ballooning like this, I'm gonna dump you. And if she keeps on ballooning, you dump her. Yes, of course. Uh, let me ask you this. See, if a girl cheats on you, would you put up with her? No, of course not. She cheats on you, you dump her, right? Yeah, okay, so getting fat, it, it's not an either or like cheating. It, it's more like a grayscale kind of thing, right? But it's in going in the same fucking direction. She's becoming a woman you don't want in your life. So tell her, be self-confident about it and fuck her feelings. She doesn't like it, too fucking bad. Life sucks, get a helmet.